Greetings, mighty companions. Hello, friends and family. So excited to be here again on a Sunday night with the Course of Miracles and mm -hmm. my beautiful mm -hmm. Anna Kajawa and Holy Spirit. And, and the truth and the Course of Miracles. What could be better than that? And so this is another, this is the Sunday edition of Transforming Relationships Through a Course of Miracles. And the purpose of this broadcast is to you to hear what a course in miracles is saying about relationships and how to apply these principles to all of your relationships so that you can have miracles be as natural and as right as breathing in your relationships sound fun i like it it is fun take yeah. it from us that's what keeps us coming back <laughs> it, it just keeps getting better and better and better um so that's why we do A Course in Miracles, cause it works. It really does. So, all right, so we are gonna do the random number generator to see what and where in A Course in Miracles that spirit knows that we need to hear tonight. Yeah. Or whenever you're listening to this, spirit knows. So let's do a little random number generator prayer. All right. And then we will see what spirit chooses for us and it will go from there. Hi, everybody. Okay, so we're just gonna do a quick um, random number generator prayer for spirit to be in charge, and then we'll go on. So, let's close your eyes and take a breath. <sighs> and allow your mind to just slide on into home base, the home base of now, this perfect, precious, powerful moment now. Breathing it in. Letting everything go that's not happening right now. And allowing our minds to just rest in trust in love. And in this precious moment, we ask our spirit, our higher self, to decide for us where in A Course in Miracles that we should go to today, trusting that spirit knows exactly what we need to hear, in the exact way we need to hear it, in just the exact way we can hear. So self that we share, higher self, loving right mind that we all share, be you in charge of this healing circle. Decide for us what we hear. And thank you for your love and for your guidance and your visions and your comfort and your care and your healing truth. Thank you. So that we say amen. 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 All right. We have uh, the randomized, uh, what do you call it? Randomized Ran generator. The random or number. Or non-random. Yeah, the never random number generator. Wink, wink. And um, let's see what chapter it's going to be. It's going on. Oh, right. I love, yeah. I love chapter six. It's a very powerful chapter. And let me find that. And uh, I'm gonna grab a, a hard book. Real okay. Quick. Although I think we're gonna be in the blue covered edition, blue right? And so I can already see that in there's five sections uh -huh. in chapter six. Mm -hmm. And so we're gonna go back to the random number generator, and we're gonna put in uh, the six sections. And it is dun -da -da, section four. So it's chapter six, section four. And let's see what the name of that section is. It is, dun dun dun, drum roll please. It is uh, the only answer. Aha, uh -huh. that's pretty comprehensive, wouldn't you say? The only answer. So um, if, if one of you watching uh, wouldn't, would be so kind as to put in chapter six, section four, and we are in the blue covered edition. The only answer. The only answer. Okay. You guys ready for the only answer? The only answer you 
would ever need. I mean, it's like the Ginsu of answers. I put on my, uh, you know, writing before the uh, class subtitle mm -hmm. uh, that there's only two answers. Oh, uh huh. You know, the wrong one and the right one. <laughs> right. Mm hmm. So, very, mm -hmm. very uh, intuitive of you. Yes. Again. And thank you, Trisha, for writing that down. Hello, Robin. Lovely to see you. Hi, Trisha. Mm -hmm. Kisses. And Bobby Hartman. Lovely to see you. Okay, here we go. It says that this is the only answer. Remember that your loving right mind, the Holy Spirit, is the answer. It's not the question. Now, the ego always speaks first. So we got the Holy Spirit is the answer. And also we're hearing ego always speaks first. And how do we know that? Like, um, <clears throat> whenever we're entering into a situation or an experience, how do we know that this is true, what the Course is telling us? Well, let's pay attention this upcoming week as we go into our situations and our encounters and our circumstances and practice listening to the first thought that comes into our mind and you'll start realizing, oh, the Course is right. The ego always speaks first. Yeah. And what is the first thing we always hear is something, how this is going to go wrong. This is bad. How this is bad. So this, this needs to change. It's not going to work mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Who's to blame? This is fearful. Right. This is a scary situation. Exactly. The ego always speaks first. And here's something that is good to know about our, uh, our wrong mind, as the Course in Miracles calls it. The, our wrong mind, the ego, is capricious, which means it's very unpredictable, and it does not mean its maker well. And I think capricious means it doesn't mean its maker well, so the ego the ego is capricious and the ego does not mean it does not mean us well. It's maker. Okay. Why is that? Why is the ego so mean? Even though it says it's our friend. Well, because it comes from that old belief system that we deserve punishment mm -hmm. and that uh, we don't deserve happiness. And no matter what's going on, it should be something that brings us unhappiness. Yes, exactly. So the ego does not mean, so we've got a thought system in our mind that is, it is got it out for us. That does not wish us well, it doesn't mean us well, and that's because our ego, our fearful, angry, guilty mind, believes and correctly that we, its maker, may withdraw our support from our ego at any moment. We could easily picture, you know, two people on one side of us, on, mm -hmm. on one shoulder, mm -hmm. and on the other shoulder. And of course, the ego is always standing there right away going, Oh, watch out, that person, mm -hmm. that so, person there, they, they looked at you wrong. They're suspicious. Mm -hmm. And we hear that right away and we want to act on it. Mm -hmm. And we have the option of being patient mm -hmm. and waiting that's right. for the voice that speaks for us, not against us. The voice that speaks second. And then it will come. Mm, exactly. But it's not going to show up if we're already, you know, running full speed ahead with this first, first voice that we heard mm -hmm. and acting on that. We haven't given time for the voice of reason exactly. to come through. Exactly. So, uh, there's a part of our mind that doesn't mean us well, is gunning for us, us its maker. How insane is the ego? The ego is the part of you that bites the hand that feeds it. Mm -hmm. You are the, are the puppet, you're the puppet master, and ego is the puppet, and the ego's attacking us, it's, it's puppet master. Mm -hmm. How insane is that? Well, the ego is insane. It's, uh, it's not, uh, it's capricious and it doesn't mean as well. Now, our ego believes incorrectly that we, its maker, may withdraw our support from it at any moment. And if our ego meant us well, then our ego would be glad, just like spirit will be glad, 
when spirit has brought us home when we no, no longer need spirit's guidance. Uh, mm. So, but the ego's not generous like that, you know. A loving friend is very happy when you're doing it yourself and you don't need them anymore. You know, a good teacher and a loving friend is like, right on, good for you. You don't need me to do it for you anymore. Good job, right? Mm. The ego's not like that. <laughs> the ego doesn't want to ever, ever end our relationship you, to where you. we need its help. To where we don't need its help. Right. Yeah. It says, it says the ego does not regard itself as part of us. Yeah, it doesn't see that we made it, right? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't see uh, itself as part of us. And herein lies our ego's primary error. Here, here is the foundation of the ego's thought system. Mm -hmm. So ego's like, I'm not a part of you, you're a part of me, Anna. You know, I'm God, I'm you, Anna, right? And that's the ego's whole foundation. The ego doesn't see itself as a thought in my mind, something I made, you know. It doesn't see itself as the puppet on the string. It sees itself as the puppet master. Mm -hmm. It sees itself as us, okay? Not a part of us. It sees us, it sees itself as us. Well, I love teachings like this evening here because this is when the Course in Miracles takes out uh, the full arsenal of showing us what the ego does, mm -hmm. how to recognize yes. it, how to hear it, how to see it, yeah. how to literally catch it in the act, and that's what we're yeah. going to be hearing tonight, is how mm -hmm. to catch the ego in its own track. Exactly. We can't ever fix anything until we recognize mm -hmm. that it's even there. That's right. Yeah, if you don't know what the ego's all about, if you don't know the ego's purpose, and you don't know the ego's tricks, then you're you're actually you're, you're gonna fall for it. You know, you're gonna be the ego's fool. You know, the ego's gonna play you. You know that, and that's what the ego's all about: playing us. When right. really we're the one who made the ego. It shouldn't be that it's playing us. It's like. It's like the, the dog on the leash is, you know, t taking us for a walk instead of us walking the dog, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, just like Greg said, you know, the more you know about your own ego, then, uh, then the, less, uh, the less it can deceive you and play you. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you will. Mm -hmm. All right. So we know from the first paragraph, ego always speaks first. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean yeah. you well. Doesn't mean you it's well. It's mean. And it does not want to end its relationship where you're right. dependent on it. Yes. Where the Holy Spirit actually wants yes. to not end the relationship with you, but end the relationship with you and the fact that you need a babysitter. Exactly. Spirit wants to uh, uh, so empower you that you don't you don't need spirit, that you're not dependent on spirit. Can tie your own shoes now. Exactly. Whereas the ego wants you dependent on it. Right. You know, and its biggest mistake and the whole foundation of it is that is that you are a, that it's not a part of you. That it's not a part of you. That you're a part of it. Right. Mm. So okay, great. So that's paragraph number one. So hi Jean, lovely to see you. Hi Carolina. Alright. Now it says when God created us. God made us part of God, and that is why attack within God is impossible. It says, you made the ego without love, we made the ego without love, and that's why the ego doesn't love us. Oh, okay, well now, that explains, why is the ego so mean? Why is there a voice in our head that's so mean and cruel and unloving and every chance it gets, it, it takes every chance it can get to tell us what a loser we are, what a failure we are, how unlovable we are. It just never loses a chance. It's always ready to speak first and tell you why you should be, feel bad about yourself. It's good at its job. Oh boy, ego is good at its job, okay? so. If you, so now we're learning more about the ego. The ego doesn't love us because we made the ego not out of love. We made, what's to say? We made the ego without love. Mm -hmm. So the ego came not from love, not from our love. The ego came from our fear. 
And that's why the ego only fears and hates us, attacks us. Okay. So this really explains this. So the ego is this always the self-sabotaging uh, belief system that we all have. We all have a self-sabotaging belief system that makes us make the wrong choices, pick the wrong people, you know, just, you know, make the choices that end up in disaster and pain and fear and, you know, that's the self-sabotaging belief system that we call the ego. Now, for some of us at first in A Course of Miracles, and I know this to be true because I can still remember easily, you may not remember as easy as me, <laughs> the first, you know, time, six months, a year in A Course of Miracles, I would hear things like this and I would think, now who would do this in their right mind? Mm -hmm. Who would make mm -hmm. an ego that mm -hmm. would punish themselves? Yeah. That doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Why would I have done that to myself? Mm -hmm. And once you understand, hi Peter, good to see you tonight. Once you understand that our belief that we have done something wrong, we believe that. We think that we've offended God. And we're guilty. And that because God's been offended, that we naturally deserve punishment. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Ram. Yeah. And so because we believe that we naturally deserve punishment because we've offended God. Because that's what we learned. Then we made the ego, mm -hmm. according to A Course in Miracles, mm -hmm. a belief system mm -hmm that will be in our mind, mm -hmm. speaking to us all the time, yeah. speaking first, mm -hmm. right away, yeah. consistently and constantly, mm -hmm. telling us, pick that person yeah, for a date, right. knowing full well that that person for a date mm -hmm. would end up being a nightmare. Right. But the ego speaks to us and makes all sense out of it, why it oh, would be yes. work out good. Right and everything would be fine, don't worry about don't that, don't much worry about, about that. don't worry that they, you know, drink 10 shots of tequila <laughs> before they pick you up in their car, <laughs> I'm sure the night's going to be fine. Oh, yeah, it'll be just fine. All those red flags that we miss, that, you know, years later you're like, why didn't I saw those red flags, why didn't I go the other way? You know, it's that part of us that makes it, that said, go make that choice, and then that choice in, results in tons of pain. And there, there's a part of our mind that knows that choice would yes, be bad. Yes. But it wants us to do it because mm -hmm. it believes that we deserve punishment. Exactly. And once we realize the truth and the gravity of this, mm -hmm. how much we are bought into this belief system that we deserve punishment. Mm -hmm. Once we really understand that, it's really one of the first steps that we can achieve in becoming healed. Yes. Until we realize that we want to punish ourselves only because we believe we should be punished because after all, we've offended God. And that's what we learned from childhood. If you learned when you were a child you're guilty, however you learned that, then you you have learned that you don't deserve love. You don't deserve happiness. If you learned that you're guilty, well, what does guilty mean? If you learned you're sinful, what does that mean? It means you. everybody knows that sinful deserve punishment. Mm -hmm. So if somebody teaches you when you're a child you're sinful or you're guilty, then what could it what what could uh, what could be true except that you deserve punishment and you definitely don't deserve love so and so when you understand that you have this belief system in your mind and you know it speaks first and you know the kinds of things it says and you know when it speaks and when it acts then when it does you can go that is the ego I'm not going to fall for that I'm not going to be deceived by that and I'm certainly not going to do what it's telling me to do right now right. I'm not uh, going to be a part of that belief system anymore and again, you can recognize it because it's always speaking a negative thought yes, to you. Yes, it's unloving. It's telling you how this is not going to work out. Or right. it's telling you in order for it to work out, Anna needs to change. Mm -hmm, yes. And then you'll be safe or right. then you'll be happy. Right. It's always wanting to change something mm -hmm. for the benefit of you being safe. Exactly. Not 
allowing you to realize you're already safe. Right. And it's also telling you that happiness is in the future and you got to wait for it and you got to earn it and you got to change them and yourself for that happiness. You can't just have it now but with who you are now. It's always telling you you can't have it now. You got to wait for it and something's got to change, you know. And it's unloving. It's mean because it doesn't mean you will. But in order for us to keep the it, to keep the ego around, it has to convince us that it's our friend mm -hmm. and our best friend. And it's trying to protect us. And yes. It's just got our best interest it's, in mind. It's like somebody yeah. who's who's uh, robbing you blind, but they're acting like they're your best friend. And they're doing it for your own best interest. Exactly. It's like they. It's like. Um, when uh, our relationship with our, we are, we are in an abusive relationship with our ego, mm -hmm. you know, and the ego's like, I love you, but then it, you know, stabs you in the back, you know, at every turn it undermines you, but it's like, but I'm your friend, you need me, I, tell me what you need, I'll help you, oh, you're, you're, you feel hurt, I'm here to help you, all you gotta do is attack back and get some vengeance and it'll all be great, mm -hmm. you know, I'm your friend, you know, I'll help you, I got your back. When really it's stabbing you in the back and so we're all in a gaslighting abusive relationship with our own ego mm -hmm. you know and and if you don't know the nature of this this internal roommate that you have this abusive relationship then it, it will just continue to play you when really you you're the maker of the ego so. Yeah, you're the decision maker of yeah. whether it stays or moves out. Exactly, and we're the ones who decide whether to listen to it or not, and whether to follow it or not. We are the decision maker there. Mm -hmm. So it says, it says, um, so uh, we made the ego without love, and that's why the ego doesn't love us. Okay, I've got to know. I got a part of me that don't love me. Got to know about that. Okay. Now it says you could you could you could not remain within reality without love, and since reality is love, you believe that you are outside of reality, like on the outside looking in. Uh, or you could say this: we believe that we're on the outside of love. You know, like oh, if only I could have some love. If only I could right. experience. Happiness. We believe we are outside of happiness, like on the outside looking in. That we need things to happen in yes. order to, to be in love's happening experience. Exactly. If we think we're on the outside, we go, but, but, but in truth, reality is love and you are a part of love. You are a part of love. You're not on the outside of love looking in like, Hey, can I get some love? What's it going to take for you to get some, me some love? So actually, no, you are a part of love, just like you're a part of reality. You can't like be out, uh, outside of love, like, oh, now I need love, or now I need happiness. And he says, he says, and you believing that you are outside of love enables your ego to regard itself as separate and outside you, its maker. You think you're outside of God, and that enables your ego to think it's outside of you. Okay, and so the ego is always speaking for the part of our mind that believes that we are separate and outside the mind of love, the mind of God. Uh huh. So we believe we're outside the mind of love, and so the ego believes it's outside of us. I want to go back to this sentence that you just read. Thus. Speaking, the ego thus speaking for what mm -hmm. the part of your mind yes. that believes. See, yes. our, there's a part of our mind that mm -hmm. already believes mm -hmm. a belief system mm -hmm. that we're separated from God. Which means guilty. Exactly, I was going to say that. Which means guilty because we've done something wrong. You know, we're little kids and we look at our parents and go, well, uh, when, when did I do something wrong? And the answer is, well, you were just born that way. You were just born Johnny. in sin. That's you the way, were just born. That's the way God made you. That way. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. You can you, work hard at it and you can mm -hmm. change so that God won't be offended anymore. Right. And that you got it. And here's all the rules. 
See this big old book, little Johnny? This is a big old book of rules. Mm -hmm. We call it our sacred book. And if you can follow all these rules, little Johnny, then God will be pleased. And he won't be offended anymore. And then he won't punish you. And you won't be outside of reality yeah, And then anymore. you'll be inside of love, inside the mind of God, instead of an outcast. Yeah. Okay, does that make sense, little Johnny? That doesn't make sense at all. How could I, if God created me and God is love, well, how, wait a minute, then uh, aren't I like God? Don't ask questions like that, little Johnny. It's very rude. <laughs> Go to your room. Time out. <laughs> Where's my ruler? So when the ego speaks first, mm -hmm. it it's not just speaking over here like it's own little independent, you know, being. It's mm -hmm. speaking uh, on the part mm -hmm. of your mind that believes that you deserve to be separated, that you are separated, and that you deserve to be punished, and uh, it, it's just uh, advocating mm -hmm. for a part of your mind that already believes that. Exactly. It's like last night Greg and I had a really, really fun, really loving, fun, 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 loving, loving time, and today we were driving down in our brand new car and had a massive like our tire basically exploded not just a regular flat tire like like the whole tire exploded on our brand new car and um and greg goes well our ego just is pissed our ego did not believe that we deserve to have that much loving fun last night the ego's pissed and i went that's exactly right you know and that's a very practical application now remembering the truth, this truth right here, enabled us to be like, oh well, ha ha ha, it won't work, ego, da 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 da. Of course the ego's pissed, because that was really loving and really fun. And uh, so it enabled us to not be like, did someone slash our tire, you know, now or God late. dang it, you know, now we're gonna be late. To Mother's Day dinner, yeah. and, uh, reservations, we're probably not gonna get New reservations because they're booked up on Mother's mm -hmm. Day, all these restaurants. Oh, Mother's and Day. And those are all the thoughts mm -hmm. coming to you. Yes. They're all normal. The first voice. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the gas gauge is close to <laughs> empty. <laughs> I have to just sit on the side of the highway. Sit on the side of the highway and every half. time a truck goes by a oh. car. To, and, uh, then mm -hmm. I tried to change. The tire because it's gonna be like an hour for um, you know the, the, the company to show up mm. and the little tiny jacks that they give you you know for the, these cars ridiculous you know we spend yeah. uh, tens of thousands of dollars for new cars and they put in you yeah a little oh we get it's like a toy jack that's yeah, so like a toy jack and we get it jacked up and then the car just falls falls <laughs> sideways off the jack. Thank right. God. It was and like, thank God Greg was not underneath there. Oh my God. And so on, on the it was just. So we were tempted. I mean, there, we was tempted, yeah, you know. We to, really were though. We were tempted, laughing. yes. But we were like, but Greg I'm goes, like, ooh, the ego was ego pissed. Is mad. The ego did, does not believe that we deserved to have that yeah. much loving fun. We had all this fun. It was fun loving, last night, it was safe, so it was happy. Today, and yeah. the ego's like, you do not deserve. Happiness yeah, and joy. Exactly, because the ego look doesn't at, mean you well. Look, at, you were out last night having laughing and having fun and giving love yourself. and receiving love. And that is not oh, what you deserve. No, no, you deserve no, 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 punishment. No. Exactly. So. Exactly. And then when when all these things seem to happen, mm -hmm. it's tempting us so badly to plant yes, seeds that's right. of anger and upset. Blame. And when you recognize it, when you start learning to recognize mm -hmm. it and go, I see you there. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yep. Oh, that's see you, ego. Oh, you are having a bad oh, day. You're upset because we had a good time without you last night, aren't you? Because we made something with love. Yes, exactly. Or if the ego was made without, without love. Exactly. And if the ego 100% believes that you deserve punishment, 
when you have fun, a loving good time, then the ego's like, hey, you're disagreeing with me. I said, I believe you don't deserve any love or any joy, and you disagreed with me. I'm mad at you. Now I'm gonna punish you. Yeah. And that's what, the, and so, but, the, but just Greg saying that and remembering the truth um, enabled us absolutely to not trade a miracle for a grievance, you know? I'm sitting on the side of the road, I'm like, I will not trade miracles for grievances. I will not trade my miracles for grievances. I, you know, I'm so grateful that when this happened, we had a space to pull over. I'm so grateful that, you yeah, know. Yeah, Anna start, literally starts um, seeking and looking mm -hmm. for all of the good. things to be grateful mm -hmm. for and thankful for. Mm -hmm. That's where she came in to. You know, and it all worked out. It you know, all worked we out got a, just fine. We got a car from a relative mm -hmm. and got our car ready to go in to get a new tire tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and everything yep. had and, a wonderful meal. And that's and that's uh, and that's the benefit of knowing the the ego and its and its voice and what it says and when it says it. You know, that's just one example of the benefit of, um, of knowing the truth about your own ego mm -hmm. and what it says, when it talks, when it, when it goes from just suspicious to outright vicious, okay? Now it says, it says, so you believe you're outside of your maker and so the ego thinks that it's outside of you, right? The ego's like, no, you didn't make me, I made you, okay? And says, and the ego then raised the first question that was ever asked, but a question the ego can never answer. And that question, what are you, was the beginning of doubt. Mm. The ego asked the first question that was ever asked, but a question the ego can never answer. He goes, what are you? <laughs> And the, and the ego has never answered any questions since. <laughs> Even though the ego certainly has raised a great many questions. The ego, that belief system that's in us, asked the first question, what are you? Yeah. Because the ego's got like this, you know, big old book in it, in its, in its arsenal, and it flips through all these pages mm -hmm. of what it, articulates you are mm -hmm. you're undeserving of love mm -hmm. you're lacking your body you don't deserve to be healthy you're guilty. you don't deserve to be happy shame yourself you're sinful you're yeah. evil you're bad you're unlovable these are all the things that the ego and its manual mm -hmm. it's the only thing that the ego knows and it's a big manual mm -hmm. and it thinks it knows you but then it comes to realize, wait a minute, who are you? Mm -hmm. What are you? And it's never been able to answer that because mm -hmm. there's nothing in the ego belief system that recognizes what the child of God. What we really are, because the ego is the, is the denial of who we are, but the ego is the originator of doubt. The originator of doubt. The originator of self-doubt. Before the ego, there was no doubt about who and what we are. We're, we are a creation of love. That's it. End of story. You know, and so the ego's first question about who we are was, was the beginning of doubt, self-doubt. What am I? Am I okay? Is there something wrong with me? Who am I? What am I? It's like The Course in Miracles says, not knowing what you are is is the epitome of insanity you know the fact that you're you exist you know is the fact that you you know is you knowing what you are so anyway so it says so the ego has never uh answered any questions since and that was the beginning of a, all of self-doubt that's what the ego is all about that you doubt yourself this is all is gold that you doubt yourself, doubt yourself, doubt yourself, starting when you wake up to the time you go to bed and even in your dreams. <laughs> You're always doubting yourself. Am I okay? Am I good enough? Am I lovable? Is this, is this okay? Am I all right? Is, is how I am okay? Is there something wrong with me? Do I deserve to be Do happy? Do I deserve to be happy? 
okay? That's what the ego is always about, okay? So, you know, good to know because, you know, the ego is, the, the Course calls the ego the questioning aspect of our consciousness, you know? Spirit is, spirit's just like, you're good, you're innocent, you're loved. It's the part that's always answering, the loving answer, and the ego is always the, um, the, the, uh, question asking aspect, questioning you so that you question your your worth and your value. Isn't it wonderful that our true maker, love, creator, God, has never ever had to ask mm -hmm. yeah. a question yeah. of who we are. Right. Never one time has creator had to ever stop and in, in, in doubt. Yes. Or it, ponder. Yes, or questioning it, it's creation. Yeah, going, uh, Are you? What's wait, wrong with you? Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, I should reconsider what yeah. I mean, that it's not loving. Exactly. Even though it came from loving. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and like, you know, our parents did with us and all the way down the line, you know, they're like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, what's your problem? You know, our, our creator is, does not have doubt in us. Mm -hmm. The ego is the part of our belief system that in, whose purpose is to instill doubt, so that we always doubt ourself. Because the ego does not know us. Because the ego doesn't know us, exactly. Because the ego was made as a denial of who and what we are as a creation of love, mm -hmm. okay? And so, uh, okay, so great. So now we have a little more information about what the ego says, you know, and what its purpose is with us. So it's the first to speak, mm -hmm. and think about this for just a moment. That first voice that we hear in the situation, you know the one, the one that tells you how this is, it's a negative deal, it's not going to work out, that you're going to go broke here. And, or look, you got a flat tire, and I'm going to give you 21 reasons why this is horrible. Mm -hmm. The first voice to speak, mm -hmm. think about it, the first voice to speak does not know you and is going to now immediately try to give you advice. That's right. Uh, always. Always oh, yeah. going to try cool. to give you advice, and it doesn't right. know you. And we, it doesn't we, mean you well. It doesn't, it doesn't love you. It doesn't know you, it doesn't love you, but it is gonna tell you, it's gonna give you some advice. Yeah, and hope you, know? you take it. And it's gonna uh, try to instill doubt. I'm telling you, it's just like, it's just like being in a relationship with an abusive, gaslighting, you know, uh, narcissist, you know? It's, it's always working to instill doubt and undermine you, mm -hmm. you know? And it doesn't want you to ever feel good about yourself, ever. Mm -hmm. You know, and it is consistent. It's never <laughs> building you up, it's always knocking you down. Yes, exactly. And it's always the first voice to speak. And it's cunning and tricky. Oh boy, oh boy, is it cunning. And it and it knows our weaknesses, it knows our triggers. Why? Because we made it. So it knows exactly what to say mm -hmm. and exactly what to do to to trigger our self doubt. Right. It knows exactly what to do. That's why that example you gave about, you know, dating somebody or something, mm -hmm. our ego does know us so well because yes. we made it yes. so naturally. It does, like you said, know us mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. And it knows emphatically that if we hook up with this mm -hmm. other particular person, mm -hmm. that the end result of that relationship oh. is going to be horrible. Pain. But it tells you all the reasons mm -hmm. why, it's a great why idea. you should go out with why them, a great why idea. you should get hooked up, mm -hmm. and then you do, and then you wonder yeah. years later, Lord, I prayed about this, mm -hmm. and you didn't seem to stop me. Mm -hmm. Now look at it, I'm miserable. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in an abusive relationship. I'm being punished mm -hmm. every day. Every day. Well, Every day. that's because uh, you listen to that first voice yes. and they never put it on pause mm -hmm. and wait for the voice of reason to come. And, and even God, God himself doesn't save you from what you want. I mean, it's not God's will that you suffer. God's will for us is only happiness. But, but if God, if, 
if God was to reach in and go, that's a bad choice, my child, that's going to cause you pain, I'm not going to let you make that mistake, then, then God himself would be interfering with the most fundamental law of cause and effect, mm -hmm. which is choice, free, free will, will mm -hmm. you know, and so even though, even when God's creations are like, I'm going to go choose some pain, God is like, oh my child, okay, that will be done, you know, um, and so. We just read uh, a few weeks ago um, where it's, the Course was telling us that the child of God, you and I, are free to set up and establish our kingdom mm -hmm. anywhere we so choose, yeah, even if we life. decide to to establish and build it in hell. Right, exactly. Then we're, we're free to do we that. We are free to do that. And our minds were created by the unlimited power that created the universe. You know, the universe that's like seems like it's infinite, mm -hmm. right? Um, the universe that even just a tiny little bit of, of space has enough energy in it to power the entire planet, that, you know, unlimited universe, uh, that power that made that universe also made our mind. So our mind has a power that's great enough to create universes. And so if we believe we're guilty and want to suffer, guess what? We can freaking create an entire life, an entire situation that punishes us, an entire world that punishes us. Our minds are that powerful. And we've done a good job. I tell you what, you know, just look around at the planet to see how powerful our minds really are. We, our minds are so powerful, we can make an entire universe out of what's not even true. Mm -hmm. Just to deceive ourselves. And to experience something that's not true. Exactly. That's how powerful our minds are. Which is what a dream is. Exactly. Look at what look at what your mind is able to do when you go to sleep. It literally creates worlds that seem 100% real while you're dreaming it. Right. That's pretty darn powerful. No? And so, you know, creating a world is nothing for a power like that we have in our minds. That's, you know. So, think about that when you're when you're um, when you start noticing your own thoughts. The Course in Miracles says you're way too tolerant of mind wandering. And if you really knew the power of your mind and that there's no idle thoughts, you would not be so tolerant of mind wandering. When you saw your mind wandering over there into fear and guilt and, you know, uh, you would you would be like, uh-uh, 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 I don't want to create that. Uh, let me choose a loving thought instead. Immediately. Yep. And that's what mind wandering is, is we walk into the situation with a flat tire, mm -hmm. and rather than recognize the thoughts that are coming into mm -hmm. our mind, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh -oh. Mm -hmm. everything is working out for good, everything mm -hmm. is perfect, God is in control, mm -hmm. and now we've got a flat tire, God's not in control no more. Yeah. All truth does not, is not relevant anymore. Now you, now you forget all truth, the truth, truth you ever heard. Truth doesn't exist. Truth doesn't God apply doesn't to this. Exist. Mm -hmm. I can't be happy right now. Yes, right. And because all those thoughts come in of, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to be late to our mm -hmm. reservation. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we're not going to be able to get another reservation. Mm -hmm. And I hope we don't get hit here on the side uh -huh. of the highway. Who did this to our tire? And yeah, did somebody it, do this to our tire? Yeah, this looks like this looks like sabotage. Yeah, look at that. Look tire. at that. Does that look normal? I have never seen a tire blow like that. And in and my the, life. and the story just progresses. Yes, exactly. And to the point, you know, when the car falls over <laughs> off the jack. Falls, uh -huh. falls over. Right. Falls over. And yeah. so it, <laughs> the voices constantly just keep coming, tempting, keep coming, tempting. Uh, because that first voice mm -hmm. is relentless. Yes. It, does, it does not want to give up because last night you thought you deserved happiness. Yeah, last night we weren't listening to the ego. And so the ego had a board meeting this morning <laughs> just before you got up, <laughs> and it said, "Hey, hey, hey, everybody, pay attention." <laughs> 
Did you yes. realize like we have a, a, we a serious si situation? We got a situation. This is code red. Code red. Code Level red. five. Sound they, the alarm. They, they were happy uh, for seven hours straight. And they weren't listening to my voice, the ego's voice at all. They were this ignoring us Ooh. all day we yesterday. We can't allow that to happen again. And so if we don't end this, mm -hmm. our very lives yes. will be at Hey, we need to get this brain back on track and get some fear going. Yeah, get, get some, some unhappiness. Get some happening. guilt going. Make them feel guilty make about last guilty, night. Make them feel upset. Mm -hmm. Make them start arguing and oh, fighting with each other. That's ego's favorite tactic you know, is to get us to turn on each other. Ooh, the, yeah. Then he goes like, yeah. Yeah, I should tell, whisper some thoughts in the gray mm -hmm. ears and. Say, hey, you should ask Anna, did you run over some glass yesterday or something? <laughs> well, how did, did you jump a curb tire? and you didn't tell us? Yeah, did you hit a curb? <laughs> I know how you drive. You this know. situation has got to be somebody's fault. Exactly. Who's guilty here? Exactly. But no, mm -hmm. thank to the court, yes. that didn't happen. And I, and I, when Greg said that, when Greg said, yeah, the ego's pissed off today. You know, and I at that one at that at that moment I was so grateful. I was like, oh my God, I have a partner that when in in a crisis situation they remembered the truth. I was like, thank you God, thank you God, thank you self for the choices that I, that I made that brought me a partner who really values peace more than they value conflict. Thank you, God. I have a partner who, in a crisis, remembers to apply the truth that brings miracles instead of just throwing all the truth out the window and going right for the grievance. I was just like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I was really prof in profound gratitude to and if you us. Don't, and if you don't have that physical partner, yeah. you can quiet your mind as the negative yes. thoughts are coming in. Exactly. And that spiritual partner yes. is always there. If you always have your spiritual partner, of course calls it the Holy Spirit, your loving right mind, your higher self, your real self, and you always have that spiritual partner who's ready, who's ready with the right thought. And it's the right thought, the loving thought, that brings the miracle that you need. In that mm -hmm. moment, you know, we needed to be safe. We needed the guy to come with the big old jack, and um, you know, and so, um, and so the the right thought is the miracle. Mm -hmm. And you always have a, you always have a brilliant genius spiritual partner within you who only wants you to be happy and safe and abundant all the time, not just part of the time, but all the time. So. I think it's so funny, you know, Aria is uh, graduating this next mm -hmm. month. Next week. From uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And so she's studying for her exams finals. this week in the finals. Mm -hmm. And there's so many questions. But I think it's so hilarious here how we're told that the ego has never answered any questions since. Can you imagine? You have a belief system within yourself that's always questioning yourself mm -hmm. and has never got a question right. Ne and never answered it. So it's yeah. only asking questions. But always it asking questions, yeah. but never comes to An a answer. right yes. answer because yes. all of its pathways yes. are directing itself to believe that you deserve punishment. Exactly. And none of those pathways that lead to punishment is the right answer. Right, exactly. None of those pathways mm -hmm. that lead to punishment are the right answer. Exactly. And we're, we're raised in a world that that's all our solutions mm -hmm. is, oh, you're guilty, lock them up in jail. Yeah, punish Put them away, yeah. punish them. Go yeah. to your room, go to time out, get a spanking. That's all get the your hands only back with the ruler. answers, punishment. Punishment. That's and punishment never works. It doesn't. It does not uh, make anything better. It may, always makes things worse. Right? Mm -hmm. Because punishment reinforces the concept of guilt. That is, was the m mind mistake that made that problem in the first place. You know, I made that wrong choice because I felt guilty. 
And now I'm going to give myself punishment for it. Well, that just makes me feel more guilty. Who's going to make me make more bad choices? Yeah. But the you ever seen anybody happy after they've been punished? Yeah. They're just angry and upset. Yes. And every bit of anger, every bit of upset, all of those attributes are literally planting more seeds that's in the right, ground exactly. for a future experience. And that's why you look at our our uh, penal system and you see it doesn't work. You know, it's not a it's not a system of justice. It's literally just a system of punishment and the the recidivism rate is so high they know it doesn't work. You know, it just doesn't work to punish. Guilt doesn't doesn't work to change. The only, so the ego never said, the ego's question is, you know, what are you guilty for today? You know, it, the ego never says, are you guilty? The ego just assumes you're guilty and, and, and is asking, what's the, what's the best punishment for you today? And what's wrong with you? What's your problem? Are you okay? Um, are you good enough? Are you lovable enough? What's wrong with you? Okay. Now. It says, here's another reason uh, why the ego uh, doesn't love us. Okay. It says, even though the ego has never answered any question since that first self-doubt question it raised about you, it says, and the most inventive activities of the ego have never done more than to obscure the question, what are you? Because you have the answer. And that's why the ego is afraid of you. Wow. So our ego is afraid of us. Why does the ego hate us? Because it knows that we can undo it in a moment. And also, and that, so that's why it's afraid of us. Mm -hmm. And you know, whenever you're afraid of somebody, you're angry with them. You don't, you don't like people that you're afraid of. You hate people you're afraid of. Mm -hmm. You know, and the ego's afraid of us. And so it's angry at us all the time. It hates us all the time because it's afraid of us. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Good to know about the ego. Okay. Beautiful. How we doing? Hi, Chris. Lovely to see you. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Rebecca. Lovely to see you. All right. Hi, Kath and Rebecca. Rebecca's got, we got her on both cameras. That's great. I love it. Okay. So here we go. Paragraph three. Paragraph three. And if you're just joining us, we're in chapter six, section. What is the section? Sec. Chap, chapter six, section four. Yes. So it's ch chapter six, section four in the blue covered edition. And moving into paragraph three. Okay. Now, he says you cannot understand your conflict, this conflict, until you fully understand the basic, basic fact that your ego cannot know anything. Hmm. Okay, so you got a conflict? Where's your conflict right now? What's the conflict? Okay, well, you need to understand, there's, if you can understand a basic fact, then you can, uh, that conflict, we want to understand the basic fact about this conflict, whatever that's, that is. Yeah, that's hilarious because think of any conflict you got going on right now in the week, mm -hmm. grab one real quick. Mm -hmm. This one, real quick. Yeah. Okay, you got the conflict yeah. in your mind? And the, the author of A Course of Miracles is telling us that conflict that you just grabbed, mm -hmm. that you think is going on, mm -hmm. you don't even understand you it. You don't know what's going on. You think you understand it because yeah. the conflict was, well, we had a flat tire mm -hmm. that made mm -hmm. us late to the restaurant. We almost ran out of gas. Mm -hmm. The car fell off the jack. Mm -hmm. And the conflict is you thinking everything is wrong. Mm -hmm. The real conflict is you don't realize how everything is right. Exactly. What if that flat tire delayed us and saved us from a life-threatening yeah, accident? Yeah, exactly. Who knows Who what? Who knows? What by us having a flat tire, how that changed. Exactly. You know, the route of our day. Exactly. But the conflict is not we think the conflict is this is wrong, that's wrong, this is broken, that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We think we understand the conflict like that. Mm -hmm. Where spirit goes, you don't even understand the conflict. Your ego you doesn't know anything. There is a conflict because mm -hmm. of this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Where there is a conflict, 
but the conflict is in you thinking there's a conflict. That's right. Yeah. There is a problem. Yes, absolutely. And um, and in this this conflict that you brought to your mind, you could just do a just do a little uh, a brief review of all the things your ego is telling you about it. This is not right. We're going to be late. And who did this to our car? And da 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 da. And oh, like crappy little Jack. And here we are on I, on the middle of uh, side of I seventy. We're not safe. And just do a little review of all the things your ego is certain of in that moment. And then just say, and my ego does not and cannot know anything. Your ego is talking to you like it knows something. Right. It's like, well, this is a fact, and this is a yeah. fact, and this is a problem, and this is what's going on, and this is what it means. And, and the ego, and, the, and it don't know, it cannot know anything. And if your flat tire saved you from a traffic tragic yes. traffic accident yes. that you would have been in right. a mile down the road mm -hmm. and here the ego is giving all kind of mm -hmm. advice mm -hmm. as if it knows what's really going on mm -hmm. it doesn't know what's That's really right. going on it has no clue right. because it can't understand how everything exactly. is being affected and by that, what's going exactly. on exactly the ego can't see the bigger picture where, where we're all connected and everything's connected and the ego certainly doesn't know about our higher self that's always watching out for us and always uh, removing obstacles in our path before we reach them. It, ego don't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. The ego's like, no, that, that ain't, that isn't, you know, there is nothing like that going on. The ego doesn't know about your higher self and how it's protecting you and loving you. Chris says, I find this helpful, but I am not a body. What am I? I am not weak, but strong. I am not helpless, but all powerful. Exactly. Beautiful. And I do the same thing, Chris, is I, when I'm starting at the beginning of starting to get upset because mm -hmm. I'm hearing those ego thoughts, mm -hmm. the first voice to speak, I do what Chris is talking about there is I'll start a lot of times telling myself the truth. Even if it doesn't sound good yes. or feel good right Even now. Even if you don't believe it. Like I'll tell myself, the truth is all events are helpful. Yes. All encounters are helpful. Yes. Everything's working out for good. Even if I can't see I, it. I can't ever be late mm -hmm. if, yeah. if everything's perfect. I'm mm -hmm. where I'm supposed to be. God, all encounters are perfectly set up, orchestrated, mm -hmm. and ordained. Mm -hmm. So us meeting that guy from uh, the car company to come and change our mm -hmm. car tile on the highway mm -hmm. was an encounter yes. that was ordained by God. That's right. Either that's the truth or we can just throw it all out the window. Yeah, exactly. But that's the ego right. doesn't want you to think about any of that. That's right. It wants you to think about, it wants to bring in a different playbook at this time and go, okay, everything's not working out for good and everything, all circumstances are not helpful. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to make an exception right now mm -hmm. and bring out this new playbook for us to follow. Exactly. That just brings more problems. Yes. <laughs> yes, because that's all the ego is about. More problem, more, that's all the ego is about is conflict. Making it's conflict all at once. And making problems. That's all the ego is all about, just making conflict and making more problems. Because that's what is the ego's lifeblood, right? So it says... So you cannot understand this conflict until you fully understand the basic fact that your ego cannot know anything. It don't know anything, right? even though it's talking like it does. Now it says, the, your higher self, your loving right mind, spirit, doesn't speak first, but it always answers. <laughs> no, it I don't speak first, but I always answer. It doesn't speak first. Mm -hmm, but it always answers. I love that. And check this out. And everyone has called upon spirit for help at one time or another and in one way or another and has been answered. Mm. Everyone. It didn't leave, notice it didn't leave anybody out. Mm. It, didn't leave, it, it didn't say except for the guilty sinner, criminals. <laughs> mm. You know, it didn't say everyone except for that person who was mean to you. <laughs> so everyone's done what you did today, which was, you know, as oh, we right. said, Anna sat down on the, on the side got, of the highway, got on the away from the car mm -hmm. and sat safely away in the grass, mm -hmm. and started 
recounting all of the, mm -hmm. the grateful things. Like mm -hmm. when she said, I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that we had this large shoulder to pull yes. off to immediately. Yep. I'm so grateful we have a spare tire. Yes. I'm so grateful that we have this service that we just yes. pushed a button. I just pushed a button. Boop. And they started talking mm -hmm. to us in our car mm -hmm. and they sent en route mm -hmm. uh, a Some tire button. company. Yeah. And so the point is, she just started reciting mm -hmm. to herself mm -hmm. all of the things to be grateful and thankful mm -hmm. for. Yes. Exactly, and no one was hurt. And everybody's done that. Everybody, everybody, everybody has called on a higher level yes, self. Yes, yes. You know, yes. at some point or another, yes. whether they're aware of it or not. Exactly, everybody has. And everybody has been answered by the higher power, the higher love. And I love that. Not just, you know, some people, but everybody has been answered by this higher power, this higher love. Okay. That's within us. Mm -hmm. Now it says, and since our higher loving power answers truly, then it answers for all time, which means dun, 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 that everyone has the answer now. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, every one of us, everyone has called upon the higher loving power at some point in some way and has been answered. And since our, our loving right mind only answers for eternity, then that means that we still have that answer. We've received that answer before. The answer is eternal. That means we still have that answer. Mm -hmm. Wow. That means truly um, my problems have been answered. I have received the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just don't know it. You know, and it's not, if you've ever received the answer once, then you have it forever. Yeah, like if everything is working out for good, always, all the time, right? then that's not an answer that needs to come. Right. That's right. an answer that's already here. That's right. That's an answer that's already been established yes. from the beginning, that everything's working out for good. That's right. And so that answer is already here. We just have to remember mm -hmm. the answer. Yes. But... We can't remember the answer until we remember to ask yes. the right question, exactly. which is, how do you see this mm -hmm. situation, Spirit? Mm -hmm. Help us, Spirit. Help us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Show, show us another way to look at this. Right. And, uh, my ego doesn't know anything, but you do, Spirit. What's yeah. your answer? My how ego's do you see telling this? me that uh, this is not going to work out good. Yeah, this is bad. How do you see this, Spirit? Yeah. Can there even be another answer? Yeah. It seems like this is the only one there can be. Is the one I'm hearing right now. Mm -hmm. But that, but that makes me depressed. So it's got to be the ego. Got to be the ego. Got to be the ego. That that voice, that what I just heard, does not make me feel good. <laughs> the ego's voice, 100% of the time, mm -hmm. will always. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. That's a wonderful point. Will always make you mm -hmm. unhappy. Yes. Will always make you fearful. Will always yes. make you depressed. Yes. Always. A 100% of the time. You'll recognize, that's how we recognize the ego. Mm -hmm. You'll recognize our higher loving voice, the Holy Spirit's voice, the voice of reason, mm -hmm. because we will be inspired. Right. Oh, well, maybe I'll find my car keys. Mm -hmm that I think I lost. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe they're over here and I get inspired. I get uh, encouraged. Yes. I get uh, joy starts to come back then. Mm -hmm. Fear starts to lessen. Mm -hmm. And hope starts to rise. Mm -hmm. Those are all of those voices. Is that voice now staying next to you? That's right. You can do this. Mm -hmm. Everything's all right. You're not alone. You're I'm entitled with, to miracles. I'm with you. I, I, yeah, I got I'm your back. I'm proud of you. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. Your hair don't look funny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. Thank you. So then, um, so that means you've been answered, and uh, since the answer came from love, the answer is eternal, which means you got it now. So mm -hmm. just like Greg said, you just gotta ask. The, the right teacher, and then you'll realize that you had the answer all along. Okay, so you ask the right teacher, and then you go, I, I already had it. Okay, um, it says in paragraph four, 
our ego cannot hear our loving right mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ego's like, what spirit? <laughs> you don't have a loving right mind, you know? So the ego can, your ego cannot hear your loving right mind, but your ego does believe that part of the mind that made it is against it. Okay, the ego believes that what made the ego is against the ego. So again, the ego, that's why the ego really never can experience real security and real happiness because it believes its maker is against it. Just like we believe and been taught that our maker, God, sound familiar? Is, is, is against us. Against us. Exactly. And that's where that, that's where the ego came from. We believed our, our maker was against us, so we made the ego that's against us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, since the ego believes that you, its maker, is against it, now the ego interprets this as a justification for attacking you, its maker. And the ego believes that the best defense is attack. And the ego wants you to believe that the best defense is attack. And un but unless you do believe that the best defense is attack, then you won't side with the ego, and the ego feels badly in need of allies, though not of equals, though not of brothers or sisters. Okay? So again, it's explaining why the ego is always paranoid of, against you. You know, why the ego is always suspicious of you and, and attacks and hates you. Okay? And since the ego is like, well, I, I have to defend myself against my maker. And the ego believes that the best way to defend oneself is attack. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's saying, unless we also believe that the best defense is attack, then we won't side with it. So we only side with our ego when we also believe that the best way to defend ourselves is to attack. And that's what we do in our relationship. That's right, constantly. all the time. All the time, whenever we feel attacked, uh, whenever, whenever we feel we need to defend ourselves, then we go for attack, thinking that's the best way to defend ourselves. And it, But it ain't, it doesn't make us feel safer. It doesn't make us safer. It actually makes us more vulnerable. So the best defense is not attack. You know, if you really wanna feel safe, you really want to feel strong, don't attack, right? If you, if you, you know, it says your real strength is love, you know, you really want real strength, you want to feel really secure, really safe, really powerful, don't attack. Give love, choose love, and you'll feel in, uh, invulnerable. That's another beautiful point, babe, is this upcoming week when we get into the temptation to want to argue with our friends, our partner, those that we're in relationship with. You know how it works. Mm -hmm. Attack. Mm -hmm. Why are you late? Mm -hmm. Where you been? Mm -hmm. That uh, giving guilt mm -hmm. and condemnation, that's attack. Yeah. And let's try to remember this week, if we can together, mm -hmm. that as soon as we're attacking, mm -hmm. as soon as we're now forming mm -hmm. judgment, and condemnation, and giving guilt, mm -hmm. As soon as we're attacking, we should quickly realize that we bought into a suggestion of a voice that spoke first, mm -hmm. <clears throat> doesn't know us, or the person that we're talking to. Or love us, or them. Right. Mm -hmm. And is giving us advice. Exactly. And doesn't know an answer to nothing. And the ego's advice always is attacked. Mm -hmm. That's the ego's advice is never, well, why don't you just wait and see and call upon love and see what love has to say, you know? Yeah. Ego's well, maybe always, you don't need to fix this situation. Just see how it would Yeah, happen. exactly. Just trust. Yeah, just you know, trust. The ego never says that. The ego's like, uh, I am being attacked, and so that justifies my attack. Mm -hmm. And so attack is always its only answer, and it's always telling you, hey, listen, the best defense is attack. And what if you hear the voice and perceive you're being attacked mm -hmm. and do this crazy wild application of, let's just see what happens mm -hmm. 
when I don't listen to that. Right. And I don't attack. Mm -hmm. Even though it does look like I'm being attacked and I need to mm -hmm. defend by attacking back. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens. In other words, if we realize everything is perfect, mm -hmm. everything is right, the moment we want to change anything, we're trying to fix what isn't broken. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you try to fix something that's not broke? What's that old saying? Mm -hmm. You're gonna break it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, if it ain't broke, don't fix yes. it. Don't tinker with it. Exactly. So whatever the situation is going on, like Anna said, trust. Mm -hmm. Learn to trust in it for a little bit and see just see the outcome before we're so certain we already know the outcome. Mm -hmm. Let's see what how it pans out, mm -hmm. you know, before we start that, <clears throat> that attack. Exactly. Just, you know, um, <coughs> next time you feel like you, you, you feel defensive, you got that, you got that, you got that anger, that rush of anger, that stab of anger, that twinge of guilt, you know, and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm being attacked, you know. I'm vulnerable. Uh, yeah. Um, remember that uh, in your defenselessness, your safety lies, and say that to yourself, in my defenselessness, my safety lies. In other words, in my not attacking, my safety is. In my not attacking, I will, I will, I will remain strong and secure, right? In my not attacking, I'll experience safety and security. In my defenselessness, my safety lies. In my not attacking back is my safety. And of course, a miracle says that you'll realize as you as you go on in the curriculum that real safety comes from the complete relinquishment of attack. You know, you really want to be safe, it don't come from attack. It comes from the relinquishment of attack. It's the exact opposite of all that we learned. Mm -hmm. Exact opposite, literally. Um, the reality is the exact opposite of the world that, as we experience it and have learned it. Oh, okay. So it says, the, in the ego, um, the, because the ego is an insecure, uh, thing the ego feels badly in need of allies so ego wants you to side with it all the time because the ego is 100% insecure because it knows that its maker could end it uh, with a simple choice a simple loving choice so the ego is always insecure and always paranoid that's all it ever is insecure and paranoid you know it's it's the, uh, it's the uh, malignant narcissist, you know, who is so insecure at their core that they can't do anything but attack or try to diminish others, okay? That's so crazy that the beginning of paragraph four we heard the ego cannot hear the Holy yes. Spirit. So that means the ego has never mm -hmm. heard a loving thought. Yeah. So the ego is totally unaware mm -hmm. of a loving thought. Yeah. It doesn't even know of love's existence. At all, because it was made without love. It has no concept yes. of That's you right. deserve happiness. Yes. You deserve peace. You deserve mm -hmm. joy. Yep. You deserve all the contentment in the world and safety in the That's world. Right. It's never heard a voice like that. That's right. And so when you've never heard anything like that, how can you possibly even begin to grasp mm -hmm. the concept mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. But yet, it's the first voice that's going to give it, us and advice. And it acts like it knows everything. The first voice that's going to give us advice has yes. never, ever mm -hmm. heard the voice of love. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And that's the voice we tend to oh, always yeah, listen to. Because totally. it's the first letter that came in the mail that we read. That's right. And we read it, we hear it, we're like, that makes a lot of sense, ego. Mm -hmm. You're right, I should take my baseball bat and go knock them upside their head exactly. and I'll be happy. It's a great idea. <laughs> That'll make me feel safe. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that's what what Creator would love for me to do oh, to, yeah. to its child. Totally, totally. <laughs> it all makes sense now, Ego. Yes, exactly. So it says, uh, the Ego cannot hear love's voice. 
but the ego does believe that the part of the mind that made the ego is against it, and so the ego interprets that as a justification for attacking you, its maker. The ego believes that the best defense is attack, and the ego wants you to believe that, and unless you do believe that the best defense is attack, you won't side with the ego, but the ego feels badly in need of allies, though not of equals. And so perceiving something alien to itself in your mind, the ego turns to the body as its ally because the body is not a part of you. And the, well, this makes the body the ego's friend. But this alliance between your ego and your body is an alliance, frankly, based on separation. And if you side with this alliance, you will be afraid because you are siding with an alliance of fear. Okay? So the, the, the ego is, um, it's like, you know, the devil. The, you know, the devil doesn't have any friends, but the devil sure does, uh, uh, you know, go for alliances, you know. So the ego is always looking for alliances, but never friends, okay? And what, what better toolbox would the ego have if its job is to make you afraid fearful, frightened all the time, mm -hmm. yeah. what better toolbox would it have than the body? Exactly. It, it has a million ways to scare you if it can convince you yes. that you are your body. Oh, then it then it won, you know. Yeah, if yes. you're your body, then... You have every reason to be afraid every yeah. single day, all day long. Yeah. The yeah. body can die a million ways to Sunday before you even have lunch. The body can be broke. Exactly. The body a, can the die. The body could have a, a bad bank account. Exactly. It's exactly. And that's why the ego is in alliance with the body. Mm -hmm. You know? And so the ego is all about the body. Right? Um, because... You know, like you said, you know, if you're a body, you should, you have every reason to be paranoid, scared, afraid all the time. And what better evidence does the, does the ego need to keep working this game over on us? Mm -hmm. Because for you and I, it seems very convincing that we are a body. It seems, it sure does. It's I mean, very convincing. I mean, it looks like yeah. these are my hands. Yeah, when I hurt my hand, body, it feels, I feel the pain. When I look in the <laughs> mirror, it looks like this is mm -hmm. who I am, yes. my face. Right. And the ego is always working on that premise. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're a frail, limited body. Yeah, and you're going to die. Only born to die. Yep. That was all you were, was something born to die. And before you die, you're going to suffer yes. the whole way through. Because that's how God would want it. Yeah, that's how God created it. Yeah, that was God's master, oh, yeah. master plan. Woo, yeah, okay. It's, okay. And that's why it says in paragraph 5, so our ego uses our body to conspire against our mind. Against our mind. Ego's like, I do not like you, Anna, because you are against me. And, uh, and and you could end me with just a loving thought. I do not like you. So I am gonna join with your body against your mind. Okay, that's what the ego is all about. Because the ego realizes that the ego's enemy, us, can end- The, the, the mind. Yes, the mind can end both the ego and the body merely by recognizing that the ego and the body are not part of me. Wow. So it says, and so the ego and the body join in the attack together. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So again, why is it that the ego fears us and hates us and always is attacking us? Because it, and, and why is it using the body to attack us? Because it realizes that we, the mind, uh, can end the ego just by recognizing that the ego and the body are not part of us. Wow. It's just like, it's just like this, this, this outfit, mm -hmm. you know, this, I'm wearing this outfit, but it's not part of me, you know, it's not part of my identity, mm -hmm. you know, I can take it off and throw it in the corner and, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I didn't die just because I took this out, uh, outfit off and threw it in the corner. 
just by realizing that the body is not a part of me and also the ego isn't even a part of me. How do you know? Because God didn't put, God did not build in the ego. God didn't put the ego in us, right? God didn't create the devil and put it in us. So our ego knows that we could end the ego and the body just in a moment by recognizing the ego isn't part of me, that's not me, and my body is not a part of me. It's just something I'm wearing for a little while. It's just something I'm, I'm using. The ego is just something that I'm believing for a minute. Mm -hmm. And the, my body's just something I'm wearing for a minute. And where do you, where do all of our beliefs come from? From our mind. Yes, exactly. And that's why the ego uses the body mm -hmm. to conspire against the mind. Yes. Because it's the mind that decides, do I want to believe that I'm a body and that I'm an ego, mm -hmm. which is the belief system that I deserve punishment? Yes. Do I want to believe that that's who I am? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to use my mind? Mm -hmm. The body doesn't manifest anything. The body's not making the decisions. The body doesn't make anything. The mm -hmm. body doesn't create mm -hmm. uh, the good, the beautiful, and the holy. Mm -hmm. The mind does. Yes. And so the ego has to get to the mind. It has mm -hmm. to get to our mind, to our thought system. Mm -hmm. And it, as we're hearing here, does it by using our bodies to conspire mm -hmm. to attack again yes. our mind, our thoughts. Exactly. So when our egos feel threatened, then the ego uh, uh, attacks, the, does something to attack us with the body. In other words, something happens to the body. Mm -hmm. You get sick, you know, you, you know, you get a big old flat tire on your car, which jeopardizes your body. Um, you know, so when the ego feels threatened, then it goes for, it's like, oh, you didn't do that, Anna. I'm your, gonna, your body oh, did that. Oh, I'm going to conspire with your body against your mind, which made that love and choice. I didn't like that. So now your body is going to have a problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so now, like we were talking about with the flat tire today, now we're learning to notice that when we've been loving, our ego feels threatened, and and then the ego attacks the body. The body. And it want, and it does it because yes. it wants to use that situation yes. for you to plant some seeds in yes. that moment mm -hmm. uh, to manifest yes. some attack back into your experience. Right. Exactly. And so when that whole story develops, we're at a crossroads. Of, are we going to side with love, mm -hmm. truth, mm -hmm. or are we going to side with ego, mm -hmm. a Just false belief? Attack. And whatever way we did, our mind mm -hmm. goes with is going to be our manifestation That's right. of what our outcome is. That's going to be our future. It's going to be our, our near future. Very near future. Exactly. And it says, this is perhaps the strangest perception of all if you will consider what it really involves. The ego, which is not real, attempts to persuade the mind, which is real, that the mind is the ego's learning device, and further, that the body is more real than the mind is. Mm -hmm. That's what the ego's trying to teach us. The ego's like, you know, your, the body that's not real is more powerful than the mind, which is real. That's what the ego is trying to teach us. Mm -hmm. You know, your mind's weak, your body's strong. Mm -hmm. You know, that your body is more powerful than your mind. And so whatever you got going on with your body, too bad. You're a victim of that because the body is more powerful than the mind. So, oh, well, too bad for you. You mm -hmm. know, now you're a prisoner of the body. And now whatever the body experiences, that's what you have to experience. So the ego is teaching us that the body that isn't real is more powerful than the mind that is real. And the ego is trying to teach us that the mind is the learning device of the ego. And the ego is also trying to teach us that the body is more real than the mind. But nobody in their right mind could possibly believe that the body is more powerful than the mind. 
and no one in their right mind does believe that the eat that the body is more powerful than the mind everybody in their right mind knows that in in the mind over matter thing you know maybe we call it the placebo effect mm -hmm. i mean we all we all like yeah pl pl placebo effect is real everybody agrees that the placebo effect is real that means that everybody in their right mind does recognize that the mind is that powerful that the mind is more powerful than the body right okay and that's okay. why the ego is always wanting to attack the mind yes because again it's the mind that creates the manifestation yes. of what we're experiencing yes exactly and so when when the ego has attacked your body remember your ego is attacking that's your ego's way of attacking your mind because it's mad at you because mm -hmm. you disagreed with its uh, idea of what you are it says you're unloving and you're unlovable you know and and we disagreed and we were loving and so now the ego is mad at our mind because we undermined the ego and so it's going to attack our mind but it's going to do it through the body imagine uh for a moment that uh, you have a disease and it, it's a brain killing disease it's a mind killing it's like a a brain cancer and it's destroying the mind well that's what the ego is trying yes, to do yes that's and, right and let's rehearse yes, it for a good. moment of mm -hmm. how does it attack the mind mm -hmm. well it has something happened with the body like the car flat, right. now the body's having to deal with this. Or not enough money for your body. And then the ego speaks first mm -hmm. and speaks this thought into our mind. Mm -hmm. That's where the thoughts come into mm -hmm. about what the body situation mm -hmm. is. Yep. And that's how it's attacking the mind. Yes. Through all of our thoughts on whatever the body's experiencing. Exactly. Where are we at here? Oh, it's 8.30. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to read um, one uh, one or two sentences of the okay. next, and then that's going to be it. Wonderful. Okay. Because the next paragraph is the answer. What we just heard was the problem. So okay. The now we want to hear the answer. Okay. Oh, All right. Can't okay. Leave that out. No, no. Can't, can't leave it out. Hear then the one answer of your loving right mind to all the questions that your ego raises. Okay, da, da, da. Drum the, the roll, please. one answer. The one answer to all the questions that your ego raises. So like, when you're sitting on the side of the road with a flat tire mm -hmm. thinking you're going to be late to your Mother's Day lunch mm -hmm. and the car falls off of the mm -hmm. jack and mm -hmm. everything is going wrong and you hear all of those voices, mm -hmm. there's the one answer yes. I love it there's a one answer so when the ego is asking the questions like what's wrong with you what's your problem you know who, who do you think you are um, whenever you're whenever the ego is raising those questions uh, to make you doubt yourself your worth your value your lovable then here is the one answer to all the everything the ego says to you it is this you are a child of God. You are a part of God's reality. You are a part of God's mind, which God created as a part of you. I mean, as a part of God. Nothing else exists, and only this is real. The only thing that's going on is you have chosen a sleep in which you have had bad dreams. But the sleep is not real, and love, God, is calling you to awake. And when you awake, there'll be nothing left of your bad dreams when you hear love, because you will awaken. So that's the answer to whatever your ego comes up with, where the ego is questioning you and trying to fill you with doubt and tell you that you're vulnerable and you've been attacked and you need to attack back to make yourself safe. That there's one answer to what ever the ego says and whatever the ego does and that one answer is again you are a child of god mm -hmm. a priceless mm -hmm. priceless part of god's reality god's mind of god's creation god's being 
which God created as part of God's own self. That's right. Nothing else exists, Oof. and only this is real. Wow. So nothing else exists. So yes. anything that argues what you mm -hmm. just heard is mm -hmm. that you are a child of God mm -hmm. and that you are a priceless part of God's kingdom, of his reality, mm -hmm. of his creation, yes. which created as part of God himself. Nothing else is matter. Nothing mm -hmm. else yes. exists. Nothing else is real. Nothing else is true. And we realize at that point when those negative, this isn't working out for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I fell asleep at the well, at the wheel. Mm -hmm. You know, we have chosen a sleep in which we had a bad dream. Yes. And notice it says we chose yes. a sleep. Why? Because yes. we chose to, to go with that, that first voice. Yes. It's, not, it's not bad that you heard the first voice. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're evil because you heard that first voice. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're a sinner because you heard that. You're going to hear that voice. Mm -hmm. the, the recipe is, can you have the ability to hear the voice and recognize its maker? Mm -hmm. That its maker is against you, yes. not for you. Right. So recognize, oh, that's not the voice of love. Mm -hmm. That's not the voice of encouragement. That voice isn't for me. Right. Exactly. And and everything else besides the fact that you are a child of God, you are a priceless part of God's reality and God's creation, um, and, and that God created you as part of God, anything else is uh, just a bad dream. It's just you sleeping and dreaming something up. A bad dream. A that, bad dream. That you chose to have. Yes. Now, normally when you go to sleep yes. and you have a bad dream, mm -hmm. you feel like you didn't have any control over that. Right. The Course is telling us in our lives, our experiences, our bad dreams came from the choice the that we choices. made to right. have a bad dream. Yes. Yeah, our bad dreams came from our choice to attack instead of love. Right, we to, heard the first voice. Yes, we, we listened to the ego instead of spirit. The first voice said, give Anna some judgment. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. rather than stop and pause and realize that that is not a good path. <laughs> it's not a good plan. Mm -hmm. Then I immediately, mm -hmm. that's how we tend to do it. We hear that voice and without thinking mm -hmm. we are reactionary all the time reactionary mm -hmm. and as soon as I react and I point my finger at her mm -hmm. and start giving her guilt mm -hmm. and judgment mm -hmm. now I in that moment mm -hmm. is when I have chosen yes. to have a bad dream exactly. exactly that's how we choose to have the bad dream exactly that's how but the beautiful thing of it is with the Course of Miracles is you can Literally, I can sit there and judge you and mm -hmm. condemn you and start a fight. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of that fight, I can choose mm -hmm. to wake up yes. from that bad dream just as mm -hmm. fast as I chose to get back in it. That's right. Now, it's harder once I get into mm -hmm. it because now I want to be right. Yeah. Now I think I'm right. Mm -hmm. I want to stick to, I don't yeah. want to look stupid now that I started this, you know. <laughs> this stupid fight. I don't want to get up in front of the jury and talk for five minutes yeah. and in the middle of it go, oh, forget everything I just said. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know anything. <laughs> I'm going to go back and sit down at my defense desk over there. Uh, uh, the defense rest, you know. I, I'm not going to attack anymore. <laughs> I just realized I don't want this for myself. Exactly. And after you for spend all that money on a, on a lawyer, of course you're not going <laughs> to give up your, your case. Yeah. Um, but thank you. That's beautiful that no matter how much you've, you've been judging and put yourself in a bad dream, a nightmare because of your, your attack, um, at any moment you can choose to wake up and to remember the truth and wake up. And I love it. And and all the while we're sleeping in our bad dreams of fear and guilt and ego and attack, the voice of love is always, 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 always 
saying, wake up, my child, I love you. I'm not mad at you. You didn't even, I don't even see what you did. It's not, you didn't do anything. You didn't do anything. You, you were just having a bad dream. And just like, you know, when you have a dream of, of murdering somebody and you, when you're in your night dreams, you don't wake up and go, oh my God, I'm a murderer, right? You didn't do it. You just dreamt that you were a murderer. You just dreamt that you were murdered. And so God, love is always calling us, wake up from your bad dream. Nothing, nothing but love has happened. Only love is real. All that, that's the only thing that has really happened. You just had a bad dream. It's okay, you're safe right now. All that horrible thing you just experienced was just a bad dream. And that voice is always calling to us in the background um, when uh, the whole time we're having our nightmare that we made and chose from our attack. Shaking us, trying to yes, wake us up. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, that's the good news. Beautiful. And so, let's say, let me see, what, uh, hi, Yitzi, lovely to see you, dear. And uh, Trisha says, God is more powerful than the mind, can't think straight, ask divine for its thinking perspective, mind's not working, I love it. And Trisha says, I'm a child of God, I'm priceless. Answer, here is your, here's your sign, ego. Beautiful. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> All right. So, guys, um, so announcements are uh, Greg and I teach three classes a week on Sundays like tonight, Transforming Relationships Through a Course of Miracles. Also on Tuesday night, Transforming Relationships Through a Course of Miracles, 7 p.m. And on Mondays, I am live and in person at the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center. And if, you, and if you're in the Denver area and you'd love to come to a live Course in Miracles class, then, uh, then come on down to the Rocky Mountain Miracle Center every Monday at 7 p.m. I also think, and we talked about we're going to start doing our Sunday and Tuesday classes at the Unity of the Foothills in Evergreen so people can come to yeah. that class as well if you, if you would like to. So really, our three classes, you can come to all of them in person if you're in the area and if you would like to. Yeah, maybe uh, by next Sunday we can start in, in Evergreen. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, we give the location of that and everything. Exactly. And, and that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. So um, so we'll, we'll post all that for you. And also, uh, I am a holistic psychotherapist and I have a, a psychotherapy practice called Miracle, Miracle Psychotherapeutics. And it's where I take my uh, holistic psychotherapy and combine it with A Course in Miracles so that I'm supporting people psychotherapeutically with these principles, mm. okay? Um, when the Course in Miracles, in my experience, is the most powerful psychotherapeutic tool, healing tool, I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. I mean, this curriculum and this, this author knows how the human mind works for real. And it also knows how the mind of love and the mind of God works. And so it's the ultimate uh, psychotherapeutic and spiritual healer. So if you or somebody you know could really use some uh, a miracle psychotherapeutic support, then uh, either message me on Messenger or go to my website, find my phone number and text my phone number. Best way to reach me. And also, um, I see Trisha and she reminds me, um, uh, thank you for reminding me last week, that if you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation to our Miracles Ministry, then uh, you can do that by um, uh, Venmo, PayPal, Zelle, and all you gotta do is put in my, my email, which is annakujawa1 at gmail.com. I really appreciate and we really appreciate your your expressions of your financial expressions of appreciation truly it makes all the difference for us it's like it's like a, a, a physical reminder that what we're doing is helpful and useful and um, and that helps us keep going even when our ego tries to keep us from teaching and one of the greatest supports that you can offer is by simply pushing the share button yeah. and share it on your homepage. Now yes. don't do it unless you really feel 
like this material or something that you want to help support to put yes. out there. Don't do it out of guilt. <laughs> do it because it really feels right and feels mm -hmm. good. But that really yes. helps get the message out. The, right. the more uh, availability out there to the public, of course, and yes. the more ears that can hear it. Exactly. And, and what ideas you know, more than A Course in Miracles is what our world needs. I mean, what what is more, what could be more valuable than these ideas to the world now? I mean, honestly, what could, what, what does the world need more than these ideas at this time? Yeah, a world where you have people on the side of the road with yes. flat tires sitting next to their cars, thankful and grateful mm -hmm. to God. Yes. Rather than sitting on the side of the road complaining yes. and grumbling and thinking of a million and one ways why everything's wrong. Exactly, and in a world where it seems like uh, like like there's financial collapse and and food uh, food food uh, shortages. shortages and and, and and wars and talks of talk of nuclear war. I mean, and financial collapse, like for real. You know, what could be a more what, what does the world need more than these ideas, in particular now? You know, uh, we're already way past the time, but uh, it really is how it works. When, when either you've just experienced a lot of joy and happiness, the ego will show up right behind yeah. that quickly mm -hmm. because the ego is now threatened. Yes. The ego only survives mm -hmm. if you're miserable, mm -hmm. unhappy. Mm -hmm. The ego is the symbol of unhappiness. Yes. So if you're happy, then you're threatening yes. meaning the ego's existence. Yes. Or if happiness is coming. Right. And we always have heard in the last days, the end days, the last days will be like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe, you know, with all of this going on in the world, we just went through and we're still going through a worldwide virus pandemic. We're having wars, we're having food shortages, mm -hmm. supply chain issues, Financial. talk about fiat mm -hmm. currencies collapsing, mm -hmm. rumors of wars yes. with countries talking about threatening each other yeah, and threatening with nuclear and, and the list threats. goes on and on uh, uh, and on of all the reasons why we should be fearful yes. which tells Anna and I something miraculously yes. good is coming oh, yes. or the ego would not mm -hmm. be so freaked out I mean ego is ego is like trying to kill humanity right ego is trying to kill the planet I mean, the ego must feel seriously threatened. And what is the thing that, what would the ego find so threatening that it would want to kill humanity and kill the planet? Is more and more people waking up yes. to truth. Yes, humanity waking up. Just like it said, waking up from the dream. And the more people we share these truths and ideal with, the Course in Miracles mm -hmm. encourages us that each time we share the idea, it gains yes, strength. That's and right. so the more people that are waking up to the mm -hmm. truth in yes. this world, in this reality, in our minds, mm -hmm. then the more the ego is going to be threatened, yes. and the more talk of war, the more talk of famine, the more talk of fear is going to yes. rise, 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 mm -hmm. because it needs to turn up the heat yeah. to get us to stay in fear. Yes. But the more people that learn this curriculum, mm -hmm will put an end yes. to the days of the ego and that's why it's called the last days yeah. and that's why we exactly. read things like and behold I saw a new heaven and a new earth <laughs> mm -hmm. there was no more sorrow there was no more weeping right. the lion laid down with the lamb yes. and there was no more attack no more attack mm -hmm. exactly and of course the miracle says that the world the end of the world is happiness Right. You know, How will the world end? How will the world end? It ends in laughter. It ends in joy. Why? Because if the world is a place of sorrow, then for the world to end, it has to meet its opposite. Mm -hmm. You know. So in the last days, it's not like 
the last days come and then, you know, and then it's all uh, chaos, horror, you know. It, the end days is, means the end of the ego's rule because humanity has woken up. Yeah, who's ever looked at Armageddon as a day of... Oh. <laughs> Today's lesson beyond this world there is a world I want mm -hmm. and it was saying that that beyond this world is a world where there is no loss mm. where there is no no loss no loss you know so the end of this world is a world where there is no loss you know end of this world is the beginning of the real world where there is no loss which means there ain't no death which means there ain't no scarcity you know and that's you know, and, and that's what happens when we wake up. And just like it said, you know, we, humanity is waking up from the dream of sin. Amen. Humanity has been in the dark grips of the belief in sin for a long time. So we should be in, really encouraged by all the things that are going on yeah, in the world. That's because right. it's really the reflection of the times we're in right yes. now, which is humanity is waking up. Yes. If humanity wasn't waking up, the ego would not need to ramp up its game. Yes. You know, everything could just be, you know, calm and whatever because everybody's still believing in self-punishment anyway. Mm -hmm. But when we start not believing in self-punishment, the ego has to come up with a lot mm -hmm. of new stories. Mm -hmm. Look at this world over here. Now you still believe in punishment? Right, exactly. Huh? Yeah. Now you still believe everything's working out for good? Mm -hmm. Huh? Look at all these people who just died. Yeah. Now you think everything is is exactly as it should be, that God's in control? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think now? Uh, what uh, oh, people are talking about, you know, Putin's threatening nuclear this or that. Uh, you know, oh, you are still you think, now? Oh, you think you still think the mind is more powerful than the body? You think love is more powerful than attack? Says the ego, all the questions the ego asks, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so as, so as, let's let our response to the seemingly increasing insanity and lack of safety in the world, let our response to that be to join together in remembering the truth about ourselves, that we are the precious, what is it, Preslet, precious, priceless. priceless children of God and a part of God and, and who cannot sin, who are guiltless and sinless forever. Let's join together in remembering the truth about ourselves, which is spirits one answer to all of the insanity of the world that seems to be getting worse, seems to be getting more and more insane and more and more dangerous. So let us remember that there's one answer to all the increasing seeming danger of the world. And that is, so we want to say to ourselves when we see something, food shortages, war, financial collapse, whenever we see any of that and are tempted to get scared and angry, let's say to ourselves and attack and defend ourselves, then let us say to ourselves, let us hear uh, our higher selves answer and say to ourselves, okay, the truth is I am a child of God. I am a priceless part of God's mind and God's being, which God created as a part of Him. I am a priceless part of, I am a child of God. I am a priceless part of God's mind. God's reality. And God created me a part of God. And nothing else exists and nothing else is real. Only this is real. And only this is real. And then you could say like this, I am a child of love, I am a priceless part of the mind of love, and, uh, and love created me as part of love. And nothing else exists and only this is real. The was of Course in Miracles says that can sum up the entire course, uh, only love is real 
of no, uh, what is that? Uh, only, uh, only love is real. Only love is real. Anyway, I can't remember it, but that only love is real and what is not love does not exist. And it says that is what sums up A Course in Miracles. Nothing real can be threatened. That's what I was Nothing saying. unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal, which means nothing unloving, exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Yeah, the ego is always walking around trying to tell us how what is real yeah. can be threatened. Yes, exactly. What's real is you sitting on the side of the highway here uh, is threatening. Th and right. we're like, oh, it is what, what? Oh, right. oh yeah, this uh, could happen, that can happen, mm -hmm. this is happening. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks, yep. ego. Yeah. Wow, you're really protecting me here mm -hmm. with all these negative Telling thoughts. Telling me all the horrible things that could happen. Oh, thanks. thank you so mm -hmm. much. I feel so much safer right now. I would not have thought half of these exactly. fearful things without your help. Exactly. Thanks so much, Boy, ego. I am scared you must, death. Thank you. Must, you. You're a great friend. Yeah, I am so scared. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Can you imagine God showing up and you having a conversation with God and as God's walking off, you're going, Thank you so much, God, I'm so afraid now. Yeah, no. But yeah. that's what the ego does. That's exactly right. And we like to hang out with it. Exactly. All right. So. All right. So we're going to stop here. We know we've gone over, yeah. and the, that's the beauty of uh, Facebook, you know, yeah. and you can you can just turn us off whenever. Turn I us mean, on, turn uh, us off whenever. Exactly. It's God's already turned us on and forever, so, you know, you know, we can't be turned off. Right. <laughs> we can only try. We, we've been turned on by God for eternally, mm -hmm. so... Um, we're so grateful that you have used your very precious time to join this healing circle that we all co-create together whenever we come to listen to A Course in Miracles. We're so grateful to you. We're grateful to you. And uh, on behalf of the whole planet that this saves, um, thank you. On behalf of the planet that us coming together to do this saves. Love you guys. And we'll see you next class. Have a great week.